Welcome to another episode of 10 Minute Landsphere. I'm Dave Woolley. In episode 32, I discussed GPS measurements and more particularly, I discussed the effect of epics on coordinates. The public resource code requires that you tie into a minimum of two core stations. Looking at the screen, you'll see that we have one, two, three, four, five core stations. This looks really solid. This network was shown on a record of survey and it looks good. However, there is a problem. As I showed you in the previous slide, is the surveyor went to the trouble to tie in five core stations and post-process them down to the site control shown here. Can you see the problem? They have a single tie from a single point to establish their basis of bearings. How's that a problem? Well, think about it. Suppose this distance shown here is 256.25. Suppose it was supposed to be 2056.25. Would you know? Suppose this bearing was, was supposed to be north 42 east. Would you know? No, you wouldn't. Therefore, we have a good coordinate on a single point and we have no idea where this traverse data is. I could make this tie any bearing in any distance and yet this entire figure would close. I could take this entire figure and rotate it 30 degrees, still have this tie and you would not know that. What, that's a problem. So effectively, the surveyor wasted his time tying into five core stations, post-processing to one point and then filing a map because this map could be wrong and there's no way you would know. To somebody that doesn't know better, you would say, well, what should it look like? Well, for instance, I could take one of my core stations, I could tie it to this boundary. These two points would be tied together. And then I could run a traverse, looks like this, and close it. Let me show you a little better example. Here, I have a core station and a core station. I have a bearing and distance between them, which I can verify by inversing the published coordinates that would be shown on the map. And then I have tie distances to the boundary, and then I have a line that's on the boundary. So if this figure closes, then my coordinates and my ties are good, and that validates this bearing. Now, if this bearing is validated through a traverse closure, then subsequent closures validate the GPS ties. A single tie, which I've seen missing this tie, is worthless. Having a bearing and distance with a single tie has no value. If you read the California Public Resource Code, it says that you'll have a minimum of two ties and that they'll be actually measured two points on the project. And in this case, there's a found monument here and a found monument here. There's two core stations here and here. Here's the published values. And of course, there'll be a base of bearings that gives me the epic. This is the bare minimum required. In this case, they can traverse the bearings and distances through the boundary, check a closure, then check every subsequent closure, and you're truly tied to GPS. If you're using real-time epics, you're messing up. Take a look at the law here, 8815.2. And it says the epic for a survey using CCS 83 coordinates shall be published by NGS or CSRC. The last published epic is 2017.5. There are several other epics that were published that you could be using, but you better not be using real time epics. When you're using coordinates shown on any map, corner record or record of survey, a mapping angle, a combined scale factor and the elevation used to determine the combined grid factor shall be shown on the map, corner record, record of survey for at least one representative point. Your map has to show the mapping angle, the combination factor, the elevation, and the point that that was taken from. Now, you shouldn't use one of your core stations that are 30 miles away. It's not representative of your project. You should post-process this data down to your project and use a point that's on site. I want to address the use of coordinates on conveyance documents. The Public Resource Code Section 8814 strictly prohibits this. Let's take a look at the screen. What you see here is it says state plane coordinates may be shown on any map, conveyance document, or survey. However, you cannot use coordinates to describe the property, thence to a point having a northing, easting, etc. And that is here, it says, the record data 
shall be sufficient to identify the property without recourse to the coordinates. So they can only supplement, and typically that would be good for GIS or, or land surveying purposes, but you cannot use them to convey documents. Why is that, or to convey title? Why is that? Well, if you look at the priorities of calls in California, coordinates have the lowest priority. So if you get fancy with your uh, RTK, RTN, EPICS, and you think, well, it's so precise, I'm going to uh, just use my coordinates to describe the property, rongo bongo. Why is that? Well, the reason is, is that the entire court system is set up and all the legal cases that are used to determine real property do not rely on coordinates. They rely on old ancient precedents. Most of the law in California was settled in the late 1800s, some of it in the early 1900s. So it's very ancient, it's very stable, and none of it is going to refer to coordinates. So it would upset the entire legal system. And therefore, we cannot use coordinates to describe property. There was a proposal in 2016 to amend this section, and, uh, and it was unceremoniously killed. And here's another lesson for surveyors is, if you think you've come up with a novel idea or something fancy that nobody ever thought of, you're probably wrong. Everything, particularly pertaining to land surveying, because it is so old, has been thought of and has been tried, and uh, stay within the lanes. And finally, I'm gonna leave you with a basis of bearings and a datum statement that complies with the California Public Resource Code. One of the things that's actually missing from this statement is the realization date of the datum. That wasn't required when this statement was written. But every basis of bearings and datum statement that you have should look something similar to this. In closing, pack away your clown shoes, put away your mini bike, comply with the state law that governs the use of GPS, or get out of Dodge. Thank you and have a nice day.